Here we are, the most awaited leg of Swing Wing September, the F-14 Tomcat. I wanted to do four parts of Swing Wing September and do the SU-24 Fencer before the F-14, but I did not anticipate how time-consuming this event would be. I know people have been waiting for the Tomcat. The Tomcat has a storied past and is perhaps one of the most iconic aircraft in aviation history. Top Gun reference notwithstanding, the Gulf of Sidra incident of 1981 and its subsequent role in the Gulf War cemented it as one of the most capable aircraft in the entire US military, if not the US Navy. The TFX program that gave rise to the F-111 aardvark that we talked about in the previous video of the Navy with a fighter that was too heavy for the TF-30 engines and efforts to redesign it were all in vain. When the plug was finally pulled in 1968, the F-111B was dead, and funding went to the finalists of the VFX program, and in 1969, Grumman won the contract. Despite being lighter than the F-111B, the F-14 still remains to be the heaviest fighter to fly from an aircraft carrier. In United States Navy service, the F-14 served between 1974 and 2006, serving two major conflicts before being retired in 2006 by the U.S. Navy in lieu of the FNA-18 Hornet. The Iranian Air Force continues to use their F-14 Tomcats modified to fire domestic missiles. The Tomcat signature weapon, the AIM-54 Phoenix, ironically was never fired by the American F-14s. All 44 kills credited to the AIM-54 are from the Iranian F-14s fighting with the Iraqi Air Force during the Iran-Iraq War. The F-14 Tomcat had two sets of engines during its service life. The need for the F-14 to be introduced led to the F-14A mounting the Pratt & Whitney TF-30 P-412A and TF-30 P-414A engines. The TF-30 on the F-14 was often considered the worst match of aircraft to engine as the aircraft was designed to accommodate the engine and at the same time prepared the F-14 to accommodate the General Electric F-110. With the TF-30, the F-14's TWR at full weight was 0.56 compared to the 0.73 with the General Electric F-110. The early production F-14As as well as the F-14As exported to Iran all used the Pratt & Whitney TF-30 engines. By 1987, the first major upgrade of the F-14A became the incorporation of the General Electric F-110 engine. Originally called the F-14A+, it was renamed to the F-14B in 1991. The F-110 engine allowed the Tomcat to take off from carriers without using afterburner crews. I mean, without using an afterburner, and it allowed it to cruise at an altitude of 9,100 meters where the TF-30 often stalled at. When it comes to the radar, the F-14s did not have a slow start. The Hughes ANAWG-9 was fitted on the F-14A and F-14B. The ANAWG-9, like the TF-30 engine, was also built for the F-111B program and was inherited by the Tomcat. The AWG-9 is a multi-mode X-band pulse Doppler radar known for its extremely long range and ability to perform track while scan, tracking up to 24 airborne targets, display 18 of them, and guide missiles to 6 of them at the same time. The AWG-9 was leaps and bounds ahead of radar design of the time, with the USSR having only fielded the MiG-23 MLA with the Sapir-23 MLA radar at the same time. The F-14D also received a radar upgrade to the AWG-71, adding commonality between the, F the F-15's AWG-70 radar and is considered the ultimate upgrade to the AWG-9 with an antenna range of 370 kilometers. The F-14 was also equipped with the ANALR-45 and ANALR-50 RWR for the A variant, but this was replaced by the ANALR-67 in the B and D variant. The ANALR-67 can be also wired to work with the ANALQ-126 noise deception jammer. 14, as seen by its logo, uses the old reliable M61 Vulcan cannon mounted on the port side of the fuselage. Carrying 675 rounds, F-4 Phantom pilots will be very familiar with this amount of ammunition. There's really not much to say about the M61, though leading the gun 
may be more similar to the Starfighter than the Phantom due to the positioning of the gun. Now here's where the fun begins. The F-14's air-to-air missiles. The F-14A utilized the AIM-9H, AIM-9L, and AIM-9M variant of the Sidewinder, but I believe the F-14A should only get the 9H and 9L. Two 9Hs stock, four 9Hs at tier 1, and four 9Ls at tier 2. The F-14 also carried the AIM-7E2, AIM-7E4, AIM-7M, and AIM-54 Phoenix. The way I want to go about this is probably put the AIM-7E2 at tier 3 and the AIM-7E4 adjacent to it. Which makes sense as the AIM-7E4 is essentially just an AIM-7E2 with an improved seeker for optimization in the F-14 and the AIM-7M at tier 4 after the AIM-7E4. For the AIM-54, I believe Gaijin should hold off on adding it for the F-14A until at least the F-14B or F-14D arrive later so that we can have an F-14 variant without being grossly overpowered. The F-14B is best to omit the AIM-7E2 and go straight to the AIM-7E4 to accommodate the AIM-7M and AIM-54. As a balancing factor, the F-14B and F-14D should not have more than two AIM-54s, instead opting to have its most common loadout of two AIM-9s, two AIM-54s, and three AIM-7s, or four X AIM-9s and two AIM-54s, or four X AIM-9s and four X AIM-7s. The primary issue is to minimize the effect of ripple firing of the AIM-54 against the other team, which more or less ensures a kill from the Tomcat in War Thunder map distances. For ground ordnance, tier 1 for the F-14A should be the Lao 10 rocket pods unlocking 28 Zunis, 14 if they intend to carry other ordnance with it. Tier 2 should unlock the 1000 pound bombs, as the Mark 82 500 pounds should be stock, and at tier 3, the GBU 12 and tier 4, GBU 16. For the F-14B and F-14D, I recommend removing the Lao 10 module to make way for the JDAM at tier 4. The F-14, in general, as a consequence, should be allowed to carry the Lantern Pod. The F-14 Tomcat is one of those aircraft that will benefit the U.S. exclusively, if not primarily. It's a sigh of relief for the U.S. tree as it is an addition to the often neglected naval fighter line. And I say often neglected because the Navy still doesn't have its Phantoms, the F-4B and the F-4J, and most of its notable aircraft like the F-11F and A-4E are absent from the regular tree. I'm sure the introduction of the F-14 will bring the much-needed rebirth of interest in the naval line, at least at the level of the F-4E's hype. It's really a shame that we got these new aircrafts only for them to be used by the British Phantoms and eventually removed from Air RB entirely due to the introduction of SEM sites in airfields. The reason the carriers didn't gain too much steam Unintended is that Air RB relies on 6 to 8 players per team taking off at the same time. Carriers can do at least 3 at best, and it's just preferable to take off and land from the airfield due to the difficulty and limitations of a carrier landing. I do hope Gaijin finds a way to have carriers work again. I really want to do a night trap in the F 14. And these are one of the things that I'm going to point out in the video about what Gaijin needs to do before Generation 4 aircraft are added. In War Thunder, the F-14 Tomcat should occupy the 14.0 for the F-14A variant being added after the F-4J. The research cost for the F-14A should be 400,000 RP, 1,090,000 silver lions for the purchase cost, and 310,000 silver lions for crew train cost. The F-14B should go after it at 410,000 RP, 1,100,000 silver lines for the purchase cost, and 310,000 silver lines for crew train cost. The F-14D should be the ultimate variant of the three at 410,000 RP, 1,100,000 and 310,000 silver lions for crewing. As an aside, I think we might get the Iranian F-14 either as a vent vehicle or 
God forbid, a premium pack. Gaijin, please don't make the Iranian F-14 a premium vehicle. We don't need premium AIM-54 Phoenixes. Finally, Swing Wing September is done with the F-14 Tomcat. I had to take a day off playing the event to be able to do this video, otherwise the F-14 video would have been uploaded in October, defeating the purpose of the Swing Wing September. Before we go forward with more in the series, I'll do a stream addressing your comments and questions so I can explain myself about some of my dubious sounding suggestions. Checking your comments and I will explain most of it during a stream. I've been collecting your comments and I will explain the biggest questions um, that have been raised for my videos. After that, I'll also upload a video about what Gaija needs to do before adding Generation 4 aircraft and a video discussing the pros and cons of splitting the tech tree into modern and World War II trees. Also, as a platform to promote my videos, I've made a Twitter where I can post announcements, or Thunder content, and stuff I can't post on YouTube as I don't have a community tab yet. This link will be in the description, and by the time you see it, it should have at least two tweets up. Thank you again guys for watching. This is the Dr. MD, returning to the airfield.